restaurant. When the Super Nintendo first came out, Nintendo produced a player's guide that featured over 30 games spanning all genres. Each game basically got the Nintendo Power treatment. You got a big ass synopsis for each game with tons of maps, screenshots, and tips. I remember my parents got this for me for like $6 at Sears when I was 9 years old. I still have it, and believe it or not, it's still kind of useful. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to take a quick look at it. My apologies for all the shaky and crappy camera work and the lighting and all that. I'm not much of a filmmaker, obviously. Now, this book came out in early 1992, so I think the latest game in here is Legend of the Mystical Ninja. Let me get this part out of the way right away. The thing I'm most excited and fascinated about with this book is the future games section. Back then, getting a look at games to come on a brand new system was better than striking gold. Check out Super Contra 4. I wonder why they eventually changed the name. Or NCAA Final Four. This didn't even come out until nearly two years later under NCAA Basketball, and it looked a lot different. There's also Lemmings, Ultimo the False Prophet, Super Adventure Island was a big deal too, because I remember the NES games being pretty popular. The funniest, or should I say the saddest descriptions here, are for D-Force and The Rocketeer, two of the worst games on the system. The description of The Rocketeer here straight up says, while the game may lack in controllability and challenge, it is a fascinating demonstration of Super NES graphics. In other words, this game sucks out loud, but ooh, shiny, pretty. Anyway, the book starts out giving an explanation of some of the Super Nintendo hardware and stuff like Mode 7. This all went totally over my head as a kid, but I still read it, and it's a pretty interesting read today, even. Its breakdown of a Super Mario World background is pretty cool. It goes from there into Super Mario World and gives away, in detail, every single secret and keyhole, complete with screenshots. I'm telling you, if you have a friend who's new to this game, or if your child wants to play this game, this book is invaluable for Super Mario World. The next game is Super Ghouls and Ghosts. It gives detailed descriptions about the strengths and weaknesses of each weapon, and also has full maps for the first two levels. I think that's really useful because the first level alone of this game is hard as hell. Same deal with Super Castlevania 4, but with maps through Stage 5, and all with the kind of detail you'd expect from Nintendo Power. Final Fight is also covered, where each enemy is graded on their attributes from A to C. Poor, poor bread. Poor, mediocre bread. I really get a kick out of this kind of stuff. From there we move on to shmups like Gradius 3, Super R-Type, and UN Squadron. Again, big maps for the early stages, and lots of detailed information on the weapons. We get one-page breakdowns of a series of games as well, like Legend of the Mystical Ninja, Super Smash TV, Joe and Mac, Ultraman, Paperboy 2, Home Alone, Hyperzone, Darius Twin, and sadly, Pit Fighter. Realistic graphics with difficult play action make this a tough game to beat. I think they misspelled play at the end there. We move on to the adventure genre, where Actraiser is covered in tremendous detail. This is basically a walkthrough for the first half of the game. Stuff like this was critically important for its time, because for a confused and easily distracted 9-year-old like me, it was tough to understand sometimes what I was supposed to do in a game like Actraiser. The guide gives Final Fantasy IV, Pilot Wings, and SimCity the same treatment. Final Fantasy IV, in particular, goes over every character's strength and weakness and tells you what to do up until you get to the center of the moon. Then of course there's Link to the Past, which features a huge detailed map. I stared at this for hours when I was a kid. I couldn't believe they could cram this much into one game. Interestingly, the game doesn't have much of a walkthrough for this one. It only leads you up to the Master Sword, and you're on your own after that. Anyway, I just thought it would be fun to show off some of this book. There's a bunch of other games in here too, like F-Zero, East 3, Lagoon, and tons of sports games. There's a complete list of games in the description, and if you want to see a section I didn't show off here, let me know. This guide is pretty cheap on eBay too, it's usually less than 10 bucks. As always, thanks for watching, and have a great rest of your day.